So recently I was asked a question by Ollie about what I was using to check the diagnostics of this bike when I was setting the idle up after I had the crankcase pressure sensor issue. So I thought I'd take the opportunity and show you my OBD sensor, the cable that goes with it and the software that I use to check out the diagnostics. So for this bike in particular, then I use the Fossil OBD2 connector. It works off Wi-Fi, connects to your phone or your tablet that way. Um, it's dead user friendly in all honesty, you just need to download the app for it and this is good for iOS and Android so you, you know, no messing about there, you just make sure you pick the right one for whatever phone or tablet you've got. Instructions are there, um, it tells you what apps is compatible with on the back and then that's all you need to do is connect it to a converter because these things connect directly to a car so that's 16 pin but the bikes are 6 pin so you need the 16 pin to 6 pin connector and it's just a case of joining them up together and then it's ready to connect to your bike. Now when it comes to connecting it to your bike your 6 pin connector is covered by a little cover there which looks like it could directly connect to you but you can't, you just have to take it off. Mine is there where the filter is but according to the manual they should be up under the seat and underneath the ECU so if yours isn't there it's probably underneath the ECU so you'd have to take your seat off as well to get to it. So yeah, going forward, you just remove the little cap. Connect it on like so, and it's ready to go. Now what you have to do to get it connected to your phone or tablet using the app, you need to start the bike because otherwise there will be no power going to this. So we're just gonna do that now and then I'll show you the app. So with the bike running then you can see that the OBD2 connector has got some flashing lights on it and that's telling you that it's connected to the iPad while the iPad is giving you the engine RPM, the voltage and the coolant temperature. Now the idle of this bike should be between 1400 and 1500 RPM. Now for this example I'm going to show you how the bike revs high when you twist the idle screw one way and then I can reduce it to make the bike almost stall just by using the idle screw. Now this is a bit controversial because people say that it's not an idle screw, it's an air bypass screw, but I think this video will show you otherwise. Now there's another part of the app that shows you the status of all sensors. Now this is pretty important as well, especially with these fuel injected engines because it shows you things like the temperature of the engine, the throttle position, and things like the barometric pressure, you know, these sensors on the bike actually measure this kind of stuff and then they all feed into the ECU to tell the ECU what to do in regards to fueling the bike. Which is why it's important to deal with these sensor issues if you have any problems with the bike and the way it runs. So before we go, just a few points to know then. This OBD2 connector is a Wi-Fi connector and it connects to both Android and iOS. There are cheaper versions of it that will only connect to iOS or Android. So just make sure when you are buying it, if you're buying it, that you're clicking on the right one because you don't want to go wasting your money. Same goes for this cable. These six pin connectors don't fit all bikes. They only fit certain ones. This one is very specific for this bike. Probably fits KTM, but I don't actually know. Have a good read of the description before you go click in the buy button. I know people do get excited and jump straight in. Uh, the app was free, it's called Car Scanner. There is a paid version of it, but I only use the free version. Um, don't forget these things actually connect your car as well. And, you know, I'll keep that for future use. If your car starts throwing codes, maybe worth then upgrading to the paid version if you can't get what you want out of the free version. Um, I hope this has helped people. You know, if, if you're interested in these things, I hope I've given you enough information. If not, drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer it. But that's it for me. Thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.